Bottom navigation bars have been increasing in popularity. And so in this video, I wanna show you how I built this bottom navigation for Antler. In this little case study, here's what we're gonna cover. First, we'll look at why. Why are we designing this nav and what problem is it solving? Then we'll dive into Figma where I'll actually create the design of this bottom navigation. After that, we'll move into Webflow where I'll develop the navigation. And finally, I'm gonna use Webflow interactions to animate the nav bar so it scrolls into the viewport when the user scrolls down. Before we get started, hey, my name's Finn. I'm a Webflow developer and web designer at antler.co. On this channel, I share real world projects that I'm working on so that you can learn design and Webflow development. So if you're interested in this type of content, please hit subscribe for more upcoming videos. Now let's dive into the video. The reason why we're building this nav bar is that users aren't scrolling deep enough on our pages. Scroll depth is a really important metric to be tracking on your website because the longer that the user stays on the page and the deeper they scroll, the better. And on some of our longer pages on antler.co, we have quite a shallow scroll depth. So one quick and easy way we can approach this problem is by designing a bottom navigation. This navigation will allow users to see all the content available to them on that landing page and quickly skip down to sections they care about more. That's why we're doing this. Now let's jump into Figma so we can start designing this. The first thing I do in my workflow is if I'm trying to build and design something, I look in my component library, my Figma library, to see if there's any designs that have already been set up. The component library that I use is Reloom, so we can come over here to Reloom and we can actually click on navbars here. This is gonna return a bunch of navbar components. And I know that there's one called navbar 15, which is this one down here. We can actually click on this and see that this is a navbar that does go on the bottom. So we can actually start with this in our Figma library and then customize it to our needs. I'm gonna head over to Figma where we have the Reloom Figma kit here. And then here we have nav bar 15. I'm gonna copy this and then paste it into the page here. The advantage of using Figma component libraries is that most of the base design is already done. You just need to customize it for your company's brand and it's gonna save you so much time. So this is something that I do in my workflow to allow me to produce designs much quicker than I otherwise would. Here's a little time lapse of me designing the nav bar, and as you can see, it's coming together with Antler's branding looking nicely. Let's take a look at what we got here. We have a very basic navigation bar, and really the only thing to show here is this, this red one is just the active state. When a user is in the section that they've clicked down to scroll down to, we actually wanna show them that they are inside that section. One way we can do that is adding an active state. As you can see, this is showing the user is in the residency stage right here. Now that we have our design finished, it's now time to develop this in Webflow. One of the other reasons I use Reloom is they have their Webflow library. If we click on navbar 15 here, we can see that we can actually copy up here in the corner and this will allow us to paste this into our Webflow project. Right here we have a blank Webflow page so I can start developing this and we're just gonna paste our component from Reloom into our website. Just like when I was designing, I'm gonna put a little time lapse of me developing this navbar in Webflow. Here we go and we can see the navbar live on the page here. It's looking good. Our next step is to link these links down here to their correct sections and those section IDs. Founders will link to the founders section, stats to the stats section, and you get the point. So now when we publish this on the subdomain, we can actually test this on a live web page now. And here we go, let's scroll down. You can see that when we're in the benefits section, we have an active state for the benefits down here, then the founders, and actually if we click these sections, it's gonna take us automatically to that section, allowing the user to scroll the page much quicker and actually get an overview of what's on the page. This is already a much better user experience for people trying to find content on a longer page. Our final step here is to animate the nav bar because I wanna show you one thing right here. If you notice at the bottom of the page here, when we scroll through these sections, notice how the colors and the active states change. Right now it's instant. There's no real easing or animation between these two states. It's just on and off. So what we're gonna do now is go to the navbar link in here in Webflow and we have this part here called transitions and we can actually add a transition 
marked as all properties, but this is 200 as the default was, is fine. And we can put a publish in here. What this is gonna do is add a little bit of easing between the active uh, turning on and off. Now we can see the easing is just that much more smooth between stats, locations, articles. I like that a lot more. One last animation I wanna to add to this navbar is when the user scrolls down the page, the nav will appear. When they scroll back up, it will go back down. And we can do this using Webflow interactions. And this interaction is gonna be a page trigger because we can go page scrolled. And you can see when scrolled up and when scrolled down, we can actually customize what happens in each of those use cases. So we actually wanna start with scrolled down here because this is really where this animation will begin. I'm gonna add a new animation called bottom nav scroll. Once we have this, the first thing we wanna do is actually set uh, the position is out of the screen. We're just gonna move this down out of the page. Let's just say seven rem. And this is gonna be set as an initial state, meaning that the nav bar defaults to this position when the page loads. We're gonna then duplicate this right here. And we're just gonna set this back to zero rem so that now at a duration of 0 0.5 seconds, so we can play this animation and we can see it comes up like that. Now, personally, I wanna add an ease on this. So I'm gonna click on linear and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out quad just so we can see this. And it's a little bit more smooth there at 0.5. Let's just save this and then we can see what this looks like. We can see that on the page here, our navigation is not showing, but when we scroll, it actually appears down the bottom here. So that's looking good, but when we scroll up, it doesn't disappear. So let's make that animation. As you can see here, when scrolled up, we need to actually start an animation. Duplicate the bottom nav scroll, and we're just gonna set this and name it as scroll up. We wanna see that this was down seven rem. So before we delete that, we're gonna remember that it was seven rem. We're gonna put it back to seven rem now. Again, the same duration and the same easing, we're actually gonna get this effect as the user scrolls back up the page, the nav will disappear. I'm gonna save that. Let's see what we have here. We're on the page, the, the home page here. We scroll down, this new menu appears. We can use it to navigate to all kinds of sections. And when we scroll up the page, it disappears. So we have this really nice nav that will come up and down as the user scrolls. That was me designing and building a bottom nav bar in Figma and Webflow. If you're enjoying these videos where I share real life projects with you and you're actually getting value from that, please like the video and let me know in the comments what videos you want me to do next. Uh, with that being said, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.